Hey, what's going on, family? I uh, hope everybody having a good day. Just coming on here real quick to give y'all some encouragement for the day. So uh, today's encouragement is coming from my new book, Little Brother Spiritual Motivation for Christians, Series 3. Um, it's going to be from Chapter 10 called Tug of War. So I, I'll read the scripture that starts off the, the, uh, the chapter, and then I kind of go into a little bit of overview of what the, that chapter is about. So we got Romans Chapter 7, verse 15. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I, I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Um, so again, going back to the name of this chapter, it's called Tug of War. So in this chapter, I'm really talking about the uh, the balance in life that we all go through. You know, you kind of see it in shows, in movies where you might have a devil on one shoulder, you have an angel on one shoulder, and they, they pulling you in both directions to say, do something good or do something bad, right? And uh, so I go in depth talking about that and talking about that scripture where, and that the the author of that that of Romans talks about that tug of war, like understanding in life where you know that you know what's right, you want to do what's right, but you still do the wrong things and you feel remorseful for doing those things, but you just don't understand why you still do those things. And so I really wanted to talk about that because I feel like oftentimes we all go through those things where we're, we see something, we're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to set up this boundary so I don't go down this path, so I don't fall into sin, then boom, back in sin. That could be in relationships, at your job, your, your personal life, your professional life, just having those situations where you fall back into those those that, that pitfall, you know? So being able to understand the only way that we're going to be able to win that war is staying close to God. And the ways that we can stay close to God is through prayer, um, through community, having other people who are like-minded, um, people who are going after the same goal to be better in life, uh, striving to go after eternal life, um, getting closer with God. Those are the people that you need to be around as far as your community. Because if you're trying to switch your mindset to switch the outcomes that are happening in our lives, we have to change our environment. And I feel like that's a huge thing for a lot of people. I've seen people who've been in one situation where they, they've been where they are even for myself, you could be in one situation, you know, where you grew up, you live here, these are people you knew your whole life, but then if you pick yourself up and move into a whole new loca location where God is taking you, you can start seeing how, what's really you, what's really you, you know, when you don't know what to do on the weekend, you don't know the bar to go to, you don't know the club to go to, so now it's like, okay, what do I really want to do? What is it that I really want to do every weekend? So that's the things that's going to drive us to be who we are. So really think about that as far as changing location um, and, and having that community. And the other thing that I would say is, is reading the word. Um, that's something that's very important for us as we're on our journey to, to continue to strive after God every single day in our life. We have to get into the word. We have to be able to pick up the Bible and read it. And one of the things that I always talk to uh, my mentees about is... Um, picking up the the U version Bible app you have the audible version so even if you say you know I don't really like reading you have an audible book right there it's free all you gotta do is press play while you're cleaning doing stuff around the house even driving the car commuting there commuting back going to get food whatever it may be 10 minutes five minutes can change the way that you think because the Holy Spirit can speak to you throughout those scriptures throughout those chapters to change the way that you're thinking you know in your life and even for that current moment and for the future or it might be something that's for you, but that you listening to it, but then you could be able to give it to somebody else. Like it might be where you in the car, you listening to it, you hear that word and boom, you like, I don't know how that relate or correlate to my life, but then now you run into your friend that might need that information. So you gotta always be able to consume the right information. And then the last thing that I would say is, is to uh, make sure that you're spiritually fed. You know, make sure that you have a good spiritual diet. So when I, when I say spiritual diet, when you think about somebody who's training for the olympics or play a professional sport you know they they eat the right way because they want to perform at a high level so the same thing goes for us when we're talking about our life and where we want to go with god we have to make sure we have a spiritual diet that's preparing us to go to that direction so i'm not actually just talk i'm not talking about actual tangible food i'm talking about the things that we watch the things that we listen to those things have so much power and can trigger us to do this or that. Going back to the tug of war, it could tug you in the direction of hearing what God is telling you or tug you in the direction of doing what the devil is telling you to do. So um, that's my encouragement that I want to share with you guys today. Again, this is from my new book.
Spiritual Motivation for Christians, Series 3, now available on Amazon. Check it out. I'll put the link in the comments. Um, but as always, to God be the glory. Love is love. Peace.